Hello everyone and welcome to Adventures in Exploration, where I make epic journeys through a variety of games to explore locales I have not ventured through before. For our inaugural episode, I present a journey across Europe in Euro Truck Simulator 2 from Cardiff to Istanbul. I got all the location DLCs for the game and having played mostly in the Switzerland Italy area to start out, I wanted to explore more of the map. So I made my way to Cardiff and during a Twitch livestream embarked on what would eventually be an 8 hour trip with a couple of breaks to stretch. I have a minor space reference in the form of an astronaut paint job on my truck, but I sort of wish I could have hauled rocket parts on the trip or something. I did insist that all legs of the journey had to be done with cargo, also no cruise control, and that's basically for the same reason I don't use autopilot in my Around the World in 80 Planes series, because I feel it should be my effort and uh, also, I'm somewhat tempting fate. It's a test of endurance, if you will. I have to admit, I'm I'm still a newbie in the game, frankly. And you can see that by the yellow lines where I've traveled through before on the map. I really wanted to go to London on this leg, but we're going from Cardiff to Southampton there for this cargo. And you can see the long trip over to Istanbul there. But yeah, I'm still relatively new in the game. And I'm, in, I'm also, in games, quite a reckless driver, so... Also, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road as far as I'm concerned on... in England. Yeah, oh, there's Wales, actually, but, uh, okay, Britain. So, yeah, that's that was an interesting trick coming in when I arrived in Dover, and I forgot at that point where I was supposed to drive and got into some trouble, but... I've sort of got my self oriented properly at this point, having driven to Cardiff. But yeah, it's still a little bit weird. Anyway, we had some discussion during the live stream about what bridge this is. I don't know. Uh, the only bridges I know off the top of my head in Britain are the Hummer Bridge, and that was mainly because of Top Gear and London Bridge. So yeah, my, my bridge knowledge of Britain is a little bit lacking. I do wonder if the models of the bridges are authentic, you know, if they look the way they're supposed to, or whether they are just like a set of bridges that they use and they just use the one that's most similar, if you will. So if somebody could tell me, give an assessment of that particular bridge and some of the other bridges that we see along the way, I would be interested in that. I do have some mods. I have one that multiplies the reward for each delivery by a factor of two. There was a mod that multiplied by a factor of 10, but I thought that was going too far. But I did find the initial grind in the game a little bit tedious. So I figured a factor of two was okay. I wanted my own truck, basically. I wanted my own truck to get my space paint job and I needed it that desperately. So here we are in Southampton. Uh, you saw um, the most significant site that I saw in Southampton. I don't know what it is, but it struck me as the most significant thing. And in general, I'm just going to skip the special parkings because this was during a live stream. And uh, going through that tedium with me being a novice driver could potentially take hours just to park. <laughs> so I didn't want to go through all that and put them through that. So... We avoided that, and so the next trip is from Southampton to Calais, but I wanted to go through London. Um, I wanted to hit London, Paris. I really wanted to hit Rome, but that's not going to happen, unfortunately. I have not been to Rome in the game, I don't think, and but there was just no trip that would take me down there. And yeah, so I had to skip that. But I decided that I would detour through London uh, on the map, and I also am not the most familiar person with roundabouts. I don't have roundabouts in my lo locale. In my own driving experience, I have not been on a roundabout. Amazingly enough, it is true. Anyway, here is what the plot through London looked like. So I decided to just sort of click an additional waypoint in London right there. And that is our path, basically along the circuit roads, trying to cut through the middle of it. But we'll see what we can see. Here is our discovery of London. I'm sure much to the surprise of Londoners that I have discovered London like this. And we saw, sort of saw some buildings there. I'll wait to the stoplight here. Otherwise, I was weaving back and forth trying to look at things in a very disconcerting manner. But um, we got some buildings there. I think I spotted the one that I sort of know as the London Egg. Though looking it up, uh, apparently it's informally known as the Gherkin. 
which is weird. All right. Uh, if Wikipedia says so, we'll go with that. But, yep, we saw it over there. Unfortunately, I had my first serious mishap in London. And it was that. <laughs> I took that turn a bit too fast. I don't know if this is the first time that I've tipped over a truck in Euro Truck Simulator. I think so. I think so. And I think this is the first time I used the tow to service option as well. But there you have it. There'll be more of that, don't worry. Uh, but uh, here we go. I have to pay for that repair. And this is probably not going to turn out to be an excellent delivery, unfortunately. Because uh, at the very least, we took some time out for that. I'm also getting tired here. That has two effects. For those who haven't played the game before, um, you start to start blacking out. You can sort of see the peripheral vision goes away and then eventually it'll just darken the screen on you. And it also charges you because you're avoiding sleep. About 140 pounds or euro or something. Anyway, I am getting on to the ferry to cross the English Channel here. I am sleepy, and I was sort of hoping that on the ferry I would catch some should I, but I'm not entirely sure at this juncture. Got to find the green spot. It's not on the left, so scooch on over to the right. There's the green spot. And there we will get to pick our destination on the ferry, which there's only one. There's only one... I think, uh, destination from here. Yep, Calais right there, one and a half hours. Uh, reasonable price, I guess. And we get a little cutscene, doesn't take too long. Fortunately, they don't simulate the time on the ferry. There are also ferries to uh, Sardinia and Corsica, so you can visit those. And I discovered Calais, yay. So that's the first time I've been in Calais. Uh, on the trip into Britain, I left in a different port, and I think I took the train on that one. I drove my truck on a special train car, and that's how I arrived in Britain. Here, I'm sort of trying to figure out my way, and of course I have to remember to now go on the other side of the road on the way, though quite often I just take all the lanes, <laughs> I guess. Uh, not too picky if they're not going to charge me for, find me for it. So here we are, and I am not as sleepy as I was before, so I did get some rest on the ferry, so that's good. You can see uh, sort of in my little map, the GPS sort of thing, there's a blue icon that shows my sleepiness. If it goes red, I'm really sleepy. So I was able to deliver it without actually grabbing some sleep first. And yep, late, because I had that accident. And a damage penalty as well. Okay, so before I pick out my next job, of course, I have to get some sleep. I also need to get some fuel, but that's not as urgent. Um, and also, I, I really want to do most of the driving in daylight so we can see stuff. It's not quite so easy to see stuff at nighttime, so might as well sleep at night. And so I get one of these little convenient parking slots. Better to do that when you don't have cargo, so you can do maneuvers to get out easier. And looking through the options, there isn't really an option for Paris, unfortunately. In fact, a lot of the options are going back into Britain, so that's not the most convenient thing. Luxembourg is sort of in the right direction, but then Munich, but again, it's not going to go through Paris, but I ultimately figure out that Munich would be the best bet, and I just detour through Paris in order to get there. And here is what that looks like. And so I had a plot like that. And so that will be our journey. And with that, we are on the road again. Now, one thing that continental Europe has that I didn't see a whole lot of in Britain was toll booths. There's a lot of toll roads. And unfortunately, I can't just zip through them. You know, of course, a lot of toll roads now, uh, it's all electronic and you can just drive through it. But no, they require me to stop, which makes me wonder whether it's also a combination wait station or something. But it doesn't give me the weight, so I guess not. But yeah, in addition to that, of course, I have to pick up fuel here. Finally. <laughs> um, uh, these are really handy, these rest stops that have both the fuel and the ability to sleep there. I will try to make use of Oh, try to make use of them. Anyway, so... Here is a full tank being loaded up. Oh, well, that was 600 liters altogether. 
for reference. And we are driving into Paris. Otherwise, it was a fairly mild landscape. Nothing that I spotted was of particular interest. And I think there's the end of the toll road. I guess along with the closed roads requiring a detour, it's sort of something to break the monotony. So I guess, you know, the toll roads aren't too bad. Otherwise, it'd be a pretty monotonous trip. Um, well, at least between cities. I like looking at cities in general. And here we are driving under the basically taxiways. You can see the airliners passing overhead, and this is near Charles de Gaulle Airport. So there are airliners crossing over us. There you see one. And I found that sort of interesting. But we are not actually going into the airport, which is one destination for deliveries, of course. Instead, we're going closer to the city center. Now, I don't know if this rendition of Paris actually has the Eiffel Tower or the Arc de Triomphe or any such thing, uh, because mainly the roads are around the business districts and the industrial districts, which is sort of a different way of seeing things, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, the roads that would lead into like the city center to see sites and stuff like that are closed off for us. You saw some cones there and they aren't probably don't go very far, of course. So we are roughly here. We pass by the sort of uh, airport complex, which is the main deal. But you can see the buildings that we have around us. And I didn't spot the Eiffel Tower on this bit. Maybe you can. I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing it. So, yeah. But in a way, you know, I've seen the Eiffel Tower other ways. Not in real life, but uh, certainly in other games. And so this is a different view of Paris. And I will let Parisians tell me how realistic this sort of uh, view at ground level might be at certain parts of the city. I'm more used to seeing the older style buildings in relation to Paris. And this seems to be more new construction. So I don't know what district I'm supposed to be passing through actually. It doesn't really say. Anyway, out of Paris we head to Reims. And I discover Reims. Though we're just passing on by, you can see on the map that it's over to our right, really. And once again, it will be the industrial area or wherever a truck may make deliveries that will be most rendered, which is fair. Past Reims, there is a start of a toll road, and right when I hit it, my sleep marker goes from blue to red, and so I need sleep, which is good. It's going to be nightfall anyway. And so I find one of the rest stops, park in it, and get to sleep. These are very convenient. Uh, in American Truck Simulator, I didn't see so many of these rest stops on the side of the road. So we are now there. And so just outside of Strasbourg there. And still a ways to go to Istanbul. And we need to get the contracts. You know, we need to have freight to deliver. And so... That is the trick. Will we get trips that would go in the right direction? Here I'm trying to look over to see that cathedral over there. You can see in the distance. Unfortunately, we can't get too much closer. And I have gone the wrong way. Well, at Strasbourg, looking at the... I think that was the Strasbourg Cathedral. And I did not make my turn. So now we are going south. We are going towards Switzerland instead. And this is the Swiss border. I was not intending to go through Switzerland, partly because uh, that's where I started. My home base is actually in Geneva. I decided I wanted some place that was more or less in the center of the map, if you will. And so Geneva, uh, before the introduction of the Road to the Black Sea expansion, was more or less in the center. And so, well, at least in the, on the default map. So it made sense at that time. Okay, we got a little uh, closed tunnel, and I guess it's going to be closed for a long time since they sort of repainted the lines on the road. But yeah, we work our way around the closed tunnel. First time I've seen a closed tunnel like that. I'm sure it's a commonplace thing for your trucks and peoples. I don't know whether those road conditions change at all uh, during the course of the game. Like whether the next time you uh, go through that part, the tunnel might be open. I don't know. That would be nice. Anyway, here we are crossing into Austria, it looks like, from the flag. But we only sort of clip the edge of Austria. 
and we go north into Germany after that. And there was some discussion about which bridge this was. I, at this point, started to joke that pretty much every river that we crossed was the Danube. Uh, well, I mean, the Rhine is also a possibility this early on, but the Danube is a pretty big one for much of the trip. And at some point, uh, following the Danube should be one of those great journeys that we have. But yeah, I don't know what bridge that is. It seems like there's only two models of bridges, I think. <laughs> there's that one that we just passed, and then there's this model. So I don't know if these are accurate models of any particular bridges. But perhaps you guys can tell me. We're around there, passing that bridge, if that's any reference. Uh, outside of Munich, you can see the uh, Austrian border down south there. So, yep, that was the bridge that we crossed there. I think because somebody mentioned the river that we passed, and it was vaguely familiar to me, that river name from uh, X-Plane 11, having passed by the same river, but it slips in my mind right now. Anyway, we are entering Munich, and I'm going from one lane to another. Well, actually, I needed to turn left, so I switched back to this lane. And there you see there's a tower, observation tower, radio tower there with uh, observation deck. And, uh, yeah, looking pretty good. Obviously, once again, industrial. Okay, well, we are at the delivery location with a bump. And let's see what we get. This was a pretty long trip from Calais to Munich. And I just went ahead with the I'm in a hurry option. And I covered 1,253 kilometers, even though it was supposed to be like 900. And they rated it excellent, which was somewhat of a surprise. But I guess I didn't like tip over or bump into anything serious. So it was all good. And I tried to get something uh, dangerous to carry for next time with my new skill, hoping that'll give me some extra contracts. But really, the contract selection out of Munich was tough. Uh, basically, there was only a short trip to Innsbruck going vaguely the right way. Everything else was going north and away from Istanbul. So, yeah. And the two trips into Innsbruck were interesting. They were these really big loads, uh, massive tech parts, massive tech part and high tech device. And we sort of imagined that these were rocket parts just for the heck of it. But my truck seemed a little bit underpowered for it. At least that's what it's suggesting right there. So I uh, head into the nearest place where I can get a tune up and I select um, a better engine right there. And I also decide I needed a little bit more than that. Uh, I haven't really bought a whole lot of uh, truck parts from this, so I was just making sure that I was going to get that one when I shifted over to this um, transmission. And it looked to me like this uh, third transmission was better than the fourth one for our purposes, so I go with that. So, yeah, so now we've got that. And I decided to get the emergency fueling because I was low on fuel. Yeah, using the emergency fueling services. As it turns out, I didn't need to do that. So here we go in to uh, pick up the massive part. And I go with the big box one instead of the cylindrical one. Uh, that one right there. And this is a special load. I think maybe the cylindrical one would have been mildly easier, but it didn't pay quite as well, of course. And you see, they fueled up my truck tanks. I didn't realize they were going to do that. So I didn't even have to get that uh, emergency fueling. They were going to fill up my tanks. I had no, there's a special job they filled me up for. And I guess it's because the part is so big that it'd be impossible for me to fit into any fuel station. So they sort of have to. And there are all these rules that I don't pay attention to, of course. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, here we go. And you, you can pretty much bet that this is going to be humorous and right there yep yep it starts out well of course i got that caught on the side there back up and i have to figure out how to maneuver this out properly which entails hitting that sign a little bit and that works yes and now i have to follow my lead vehicle which is always too slow for me, but probably for the best. Uh, here we are navigating these and trying to make this on-ramp, but the vehicle actually sort of seems to stall out. 
I can't move anymore. I have to. I, I lower the gear to try and get some better traction. And in first gear, I managed to get it moving again. Yep. So this is fun. The, the cops are there to block off the road for me, so they're being helpful this time. And then I uh, went like that. I, I don't even know how that happened, but it happened. So we, we tipped over and then we flopped right back like we had reaction wheels or something. But that caused a problem because, first of all, I couldn't see a darn thing. Uh, not very easy to see what's going on here. Uh, but then another vehicle showed up too. Oh, and then the, my rear escort, so you can see the bus coming. And then I've got the rear escort that is sort of blocking my way in the back. At least it's telling me to watch out for it. So the bus stops right there and doesn't... I, I honk. I tried to honk, I think. And it didn't move. So I back up as much as I can. Uh, yeah, watch out for the rear guy. And I couldn't figure out anything to do except for what I ended up doing. Which was going like this and forward and taking the crashed vehicle offense to clear that bus off the road. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's what you get. I tried not to damage the cargo and it seems like I managed to maneuver around the bus or at least uh, didn't hit the bus with enough force to cause a problem. There were lots of winding roads. I, I I don't know how I did that trailer damage right there. I guess I hit something on the winding road. I don't know what it was. But yeah, the trailer accumulated 12% damage. And that's pretty costly, actually. Anyway, I discovered Innsbruck, which is sort of a surprise because I started in Geneva. I thought I had driven into Innsbruck before. I had driven into northern Italy and parts of southern France before, before starting this trip. And, of course, making my way up to Cardiff. Anyway, I was a little bit nervous here because it didn't seem to me like the cargo could fit through that. Yeah, well, I mean, it could, but it'd be really tight and prone to do bad things, right? Then again, as soon as I hit that green spot, I can trigger the delivery, so I didn't really have to worry about that. Okay, so they said good work. Well, it could have been worse. And there was a damage penalty. Actually, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And then I got a trip into Poland sort of in the wrong direction. It's going north. It's going northeast instead of southeast, but it's the best I could do. And it would hit some interesting places through all of Austria. And uh, we would then be able to go south from Poland. Hopefully we'll get a contract south from Poland. And I am carrying a tractor, as you can see. So there we go. Tunnels, Alps, mini Alps, and uh, scenic sunrise at this point. I'm a little bit sleepy, according to the indicator. That's the wrong time. I guess because I uh, the special delivery was at nighttime. It was forced into nighttime, and there was a blockage there. And I completely ignored that. <laughs> and we will find out why it was blocked momentarily. But yeah, uh, the special delivery just sort of time warped through the daytime and made me do the thing at night. And here we have a helicopter... Uh, dealing with an accident. You can see the accident there and the helicopter still has its rotor blades. I think I actually caught, no, I'm just sort of off the road a little bit. And the rotor blades guy clipped the tractor. That would do more damage to the, the helicopter than the tractor to be honest. But anyway, I didn't have the patience to take a detour or anything like that this time around. So we just went through. Besides, I sort of wanted to show you the helicopter. And here we find ourselves next to a TM Istanbul truck, which looked pretty nifty. I don't know what TM Istanbul is, but presumably it's going the right way. Here we go, discovering Vienna. And I wouldn't even know what sights to see in Vienna if I knew sights. But there is a building there. And a carousel from the look of it. So those are apparently things in Vienna. I needed to repair myself. Yeah, I've been giving me warnings because of hitting that helicopter. So service and repairs, 7,000 worth. But we are all right and we are in Vienna. You can see Katowice, 
uh, Katowice, maybe, is the way to pronounce our destination in Poland. And it's raining. Well, on a trip like this, you expect to get all the things. I guess we don't get snow, so there is that. But there is rain. You can see turning right, and I'm getting tired, and I have a lack of fuel. I really didn't want to use the fuel rats again, the, the elite dangerous term for the people who will come out and give you fuel. I don't know if it's a specific elite dangerous term. Maybe it's a general term. Anyway, but I managed to get to Katowice uh, before actually running out of fuel or needing sleep, so I made the delivery of the tractor to this location here. Sure, a long way to get a tractor, but whatever. And that uh, Play It Safe one was easy enough, so I just went ahead and did that and got the extra XP, which I need. After all, I'm still a fairly low-level character in this game. And there we go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. A little bit more. And there we go. So, how did I do with that? Good work. All right. I'll take it. So, yep. A little bit more money. And remember, this is double what you would normally get. And I decided to go with long distance. I didn't notice that I hadn't applied the other point before. Maxing out long distance hauling on the skills is a goal of mine because I sort of have this idea of going clear across Europe on one trip with one cargo, but I don't know if that's such a good idea if you want to see the sights. We'd have to take quite a lot of detours. Here I am picking up packed glass going from Katowice in Poland to Timisoara in Romania. And so that will definitely bring us closer to Istanbul. I was very happy with the chance to pick up that one, and I was a little bit too excited. <laughs> I took that turn a little bit uh, fast. Uh, by the way, I haven't mentioned some of the other mods. I mentioned uh, two times the money uh, on the missions, but I did not mention the fact that I have realistic truck physics, <laughs> which uh, I don't know if that tip would have happened in the regular game or whether that's realistic truck physics, but I have realistic truck physics installed. Also, uh, realistic gas stations and companies, uh, I think trailers or something like that. So yeah, uh, I'm trying for the realism mod. So this is Euro Truck Simulator Realism Overhaul with some extra money. Um, yeah, basically. And ex I think there are some mods I don't have enabled. This was a very long gate. It didn't want to let me go. I was, I was actually looking at the guy going, hey, let me go. But anyway... And then we hit some interesting mountain roads. I think there's Slovakia. Slovakia is very alpine. And uh, I, I recall that from X-Plane 11 flying over it. But uh, we really hit here. We got a whole traffic jam <laughs> up going up this thing. And yeah, this was a little bit tedious. But scenic, you know, I mean, it's uh, something a little bit different. I'm surprised that it was uh, so much more serious here than, for instance, through Switzerland and Austria. But then again, they have bigger highways, I suppose, going in the direction we were going in. There is this nice little causeway. I say little. This is a pretty big causeway and a Rossmark truck in front of us. And here we are making our way into Budapest. And unfortunately, it is in nighttime. I want... I, don't know if I rest here, hopefully, but we can't see anything, obviously, at least not distinctly. So, and I'm weaving around, but at the stoplight, we can take a look. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Can't really spot anything definite. So, yeah, I do end up sleeping here, even though I'm just on the blue instead of the red on the sleep meter. And we'll get a better look at it in the daylight. Well, there is a tower there in front of us. There are also some other buildings, but I can't tell if they are of special note. And, uh, well, the one to our right is rather indistinct. There is a huge crane there. And an interesting overpass. But moving right along, I encountered Zeged, which I don't remember. I don't know if I have previously known of this city, but here we are. I have discovered this 
really discovered this for the first time. And there's an Ikea. I think that's an Ikea. It's blue and yellow, so it's an Ikea. And yep, this is what Sega looks like. Pretty detailed industrial area. Maybe maybe it's more of an industrial city, but there's a, there's a cathedral there. The vehicles suddenly slow down because there's a border crossing and I managed not to bump the truck in front of me. And here we are navigating through that. And this is the crossing into Romania, crossing out of Hungary. I think this is our first actual passport check of the trip. And Romania is part of the European Union, I believe. And so is Bulgaria. The I think the first country that we encounter that isn't will be Turkey. And that border is really elaborate, but still we have to get a passport check here. All right. So proceeding, this looked like a sort of a weight scale thing too, from the thing at the bottom. It's sort of an interesting path out. You can see it's sort of windy. I waited for that truck to go first, uh, but there's actually a mini checkpoint at the end there too, at the end of the windy road. And I'm not entirely sure how this all works, but okay. These border crossings, they, they have all these checkpoints. The later ones are even more elaborate, so... Anyway, eventually we got through all that, and we are on our way to Timisora. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that properly. And it seems like the road to Timisora includes a random roundabout. Or, actually, if you look on the map, Timisora is indicated in front. We're sort of going off to the side to make the delivery. So I don't know if we actually discover Timisora yet. It looks like there's the road into the airport, and you know how airports are often way outside the cities. So yeah, you see an airplane there, sort of a hangar thing there. Random cross by the side of the road. And the delivery was to Dom Depot. I don't know if there is such a real thing or not. Not sure, but here we go. And play it safe was fairly easy. Not a big deal to get it there. So all right. Slot it into that spot. And we are good. Let's see what they thought of the trip. Well, I was late this time because I did tip over, remember? I had to get uh, recovered. So, and there was a damage penalty, obviously. So not so good, but okay. Next trip actually brought us all the way into Turkey, uh, to Adirna. And so we will be crossing Bulgaria there. You can see the road. There wasn't anything better. Um, so it was definitely the way to go. And it was the post. We were picking up post packages. So all your Christmas deliveries or New Year's deliveries or something. I don't know, whatever. We went into the airport here at Timisora following a lumber truck. I'm not entirely sure what a lumber truck might be doing at the airport, but okay. I don't think planes would be used for that. Maybe they're building a plane, I don't know. <laughs> yep, not too sure what that lumber is for. But anyway, we went in. It totally makes sense for us to pick up the post from an airport. That That's all good. So I got my post trailer. And we will try not to damage all of your packages. So, out we go. And this is sort of an interesting thing off to the right. I'm not too sure what that is. And sunrise again. I think I had some sleep somewhere. So that was a nice sunrise. Uh, they're, they're all about the same, but they're still nice. I don't think there's a whole uh, dynamic range in the sunrises in this game. I discovered Cryova, which I believe is close to the border with Bulgaria, and I did not make that turn right. I didn't re realize this roundabout. I could have got, just continued going around the roundabout. It is a roundabout after all, but I went the wrong way. Anyway, managed to make that without damaging anything too badly. And this is Cryova, which I sort of noticed was actually more detailed than a whole lot of other cities that we passed through. and. I guess that's good. This uh, whole road to the Black Sea expansion seems to be very detailed. There's a lot of buildings in the cities and everything. 
Not that I'd be able to give an expert opinion on how accurate it was, having never been there. But I sort of, at the same time, felt guilty about passing through residential neighborhoods like this and also fascinated because we haven't gotten to do so because mostly it's been industrial areas. So this seemed like a change of pace, at least. Next up, we have the entry into Bulgaria. So we've got the weight scales here, passing the inspection here, 24 tons. And then, of course, we have to go through the main customs slash passport check or whatever else they do here. And the border check. I guess that's a good catch-all term. All right, documents are checked. And at this point, I was reminded of papers, please. <laughs> but uh, okay, off we go. This one was a little bit simpler than the Romanian border. That was a bit more complicated. Here we have another bridge. And I'm going to say it's over the Danube. It might be. It might not be. It looks like the Danube to me. I can't tell by the bridge. It looks exactly like the other bridges we've seen, at least the ones with suspension. And that's that's pretty wide for a river. There should be a Danube here somewhere. <laughs> so anyway, you can see on the map how much of Europe the Danube actually streams through, how many large cities it goes through, and how much of our journey it sort of occupies. We had to have crossed over it uh, near Budapest, I think, and Vienna, I think. So, yeah, lots of crossings of the Danube that I didn't even notice happened during this journey, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, we are in this nice small town in Bulgaria. Not entirely sure what the name of the town is, but it's very nice looking. And we've got this uh, pipeline to the left of us here. And initially I thought it was uh, like a monorail, but uh, that was me being tired after a long trip, I guess. But yeah, the uh, first time I've seen a pipeline along, along the roadway in the game. So that was worth noting. And we see a city up ahead. This is Kozlodwi. Uh, Kozlodwi, hopefully. Something like that. And it seems like just an industrial establishment as far as what they've rendered here. And that was an interesting little sign by the side of the road as we turn over here. And I probably should have looked before turning, but hey, it was pretty clear. Not a whole lot of traffic here. And here we're entering Pleven. And I don't remember if I've ever flown around Pleven in X-Plane 11. I don't think so. But you can review my Around the World in 80 Planes and see if I, if I did manage that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's got some sort of a st uh, building to the left there. That was interesting looking. These look to be closed up. I don't know. Don't seem to be the most active, but then how can you tell unless there are people going in and out, I guess. Next up is Veliko Tarnovo, and I was informed by my one Bulgarian viewer, at least the one that talks a bit, uh, Mikko, mentioned that it was the historical capital of the Second Bulgarian Kingdom, uh, the city of the Tsars, according to uh, Wikipedia. And yeah, uh, it's supposed to have a castle somewhere. I don't know if these rocks to our right are like remnants of the castle, but I didn't see a castle. I did see some buildings there. And we have another roadblock. And I do the same thing I did last time. I'm just gonna go around. I could take a detour, but I'm getting sleepy. You know what, I'm getting sleepy there. And in fact, uh, my vision dims because of the sleepiness. Again, the penalty for being sleepy, driving sleepy, is the vision dims and also they charge you uh, a penalty for that. I bump into a whole bunch of stuff, but apparently didn't do any damage to the post, hopefully. Uh, I'm a little bit stuck here right now, though. Uh, come on, come on. Yes, we can get through. Very good. But is there going to be another chopper? This isn't as tall as the tractor, but no, it's just a normal accident. No helicopter to do us damage, so I can just go around. They really should probably charge some sort of penalty for going around those roadblocks. But right now they don't. And so I can just go ahead and ignore the whole business. And here we are finally at the Turkish border. The Turkish border with Bulgaria, obviously. And I'm very sleepy. 
and uh, so this is going to be interesting. But it's a very elaborate border, of course, it is uh, exiting the European Union now. And so we've got all sorts of speed bumps and an x-ray inspection that was passed between those speed bumps, I suppose. And here is customs. And we stop and okay, apparently we have to stop there first and then we stop at the actual customs or border control position and they'll check our documents. But it's not over yet, no. There's a whole other stage of getting through things. We pass where the flags were and then there's this other installation here. And I don't remember if I have to stop here or not. Let's see. That's the official Turkish entrance, I guess. It says Turkey there. Okay. Please pull the vehicle. Oh, vehicle inspection at nearest station. Okay. And we have to take a left here. I guess this is the nearest thing, or this is just a control point. They're gonna let me through. Yes, okay. And then we have to go over there. Okay, that was the wait station. All right. X-ray inspection not good enough for you. Did they not share the information from the X-ray inspection? Okay, another customs border control agent. I guess the other one was exiting the Euro European Union and this entering Turkey, something like that. Anyway, we cross the border at the location you see up north there, right there. And so it's actually the eastern one and then we have to go around and then to Adirna. Now, I'm getting awful sleepy here. And uh, if you can see in front of me, there is still a, sort of a checkpoint thing there. Uh, there's a green light. Is it going to stop me? Yeah, there's a bar there. So I have to slow down again. I don't know why. <laughs> Haven't you done enough checking? All right. Onward. Finally, finally we are in Turkey. I think. But it sure doesn't take me long to get myself into trouble. I don't see anything on my uh, peripheral, but there's a car there. There's a car. Ah, uh, crashed vehicle offense. Yep, right when I get into Turkey, I've already committed an infraction and my lack of sleep catches up with me and I tip over because I was dozing. See that dozing screen? That is serious stuff. So you better get your sleep. This is a PSA for all of you. By the way, I was also technically drinking a little bit while doing this stream. So this is also a lesson to everyone watching. Do not drink and drive. Obviously, you do not want to drive this badly. But uh, yeah, I was having a Belgian ale, actually. Uh, a Trappist Rochefort 10, if you're curious. But that's it. No, no, nothing, nothing more than that. But still, that's my excuse for the bad driving, okay? I still haven't got and gotten sleep, by the way. Having crashed and having gotten the servicing, uh, I've still got the dozing problem, which leads me to have some trouble getting out of this place because every time I try and make a turn, it gets me dozing and I end up confronted by a wall. Uh, so ultimately, I decide I have to back up. Uh, here, I'm still trying to get out of here. See, I'm aiming, but then it goes dozing again, and I don't know what I'm doing. It doesn't let you control the vehicle while you're dozing either, so you can't, like, do it blindly or anything. So, yeah, I end up like this. And so, yeah, I have to back up, and they ding me for the avoiding sleep offense, so I get charged as well as I'm trying to back up here and trying to get back in. I'm trying to get back in because there is a place to sleep in there, which would be convenient most convenient option. Somebody suggested unhooking the trailer and going in, but I was already committed. So in we go, trying to maneuver. And uh, the sleep slots are to my right there. And dozing again. This is very dangerous. Do not do this. All right, so I attempt to park and get my sleep right here. 
since it is the most convenient option. But I don't really trigger the sleep thing. And maybe it's because I'm so sleepy that I can't trigger the sleep thing. But I try and park and then I'm not able to actually trigger the sleep dialogue, if you will. As you can see me being frustrated there as I wiggle the camera around. And uh, ultimately I have to restart the engine to see what's up. And I sort of back out a little bit and go forward again. And I see that the trigger spot is really specific. You can see it flashes very quickly there. And so I have to crawl forward and there, just there. I have to get it right there, otherwise it won't work. I don't know whether that's because I'm tired and so the sleep margin is a little bit tighter or whether it was it's just that slot. This is an interesting little monument at... Uh, the entrance of Adirna here on this roundabout. Why are all the entrances to the city's roundabouts? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so here we go into... Oh, I messed up a little bit there. I think this is still the airport area that we're entering here with the post. So I'm just doing interim truck thing between two airports. Balkan Loco. Well, or I'm getting it to a train. Maybe I'm getting it to a train. It is a train stop. I decided that the easy unloading area was easy enough on this one, so I went with it. It's just right there on the side. And the verdict was late, of course, because I had that tip over, and that meant I was brought into servicing, and that took a while. So, but I got a new level, and finally I got. Uh, extra hazardous materials to carry because you know those would be wonderful in my hands but here our final leg of the journey into Istanbul and we will be carrying a tractor from Adirna to Istanbul and we actually have to do a sort of u-turn at this intersection it seems weird doing a u-turn at an inner uh, at a major like highway interchange like this but apparently that's a thing that can be done Unfortunately, after turning, I was going a bit fast and I couldn't stop in time for that poor little vehicle there, so I crashed into it. I, it is full disclosure, I'm showing you all the mistakes that were made. Uh, frankly, I think that's the fun part. If, it was, if, if I was completely smooth at this, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting to watch, I don't think. I, it might not be interesting anyway, but that's up to you guys. Um, I find it interesting to see, for instance, me going the wrong way here. <laughs> yep, yep. No, I, I, I was supposed to go further to the right of that particular tractor. Yeah, back up again, back up, go the right way. Yep, little, little things like that happen. Anyway, but onward to Istanbul. Uh, that iron is apparently some sort of Turkish soda or a soft drink. So we see a lot of signs for that. I saw on on Google ways of making it too. So maybe that's a thing to try. So here we go. This is one of those toll roads, but this is not one you have to stop at. Turkey doesn't require you to stop at the toll roads, but there's a wait station there, so it doesn't matter. Net net, I still have to stop. So okay. And here we go, 21 tons proceeding. And here is a really large causeway. I swear I've flown over this particular causeway in X-Plane 11 before. And we will be discovering Istanbul momentarily. Waiting. There we go. We have discovered Istanbul. My first time in and we have officially crossed Europe, I guess. I gotta do it the northern way uh, through Scandinavia. Maybe on the way back. From Istanbul on the way back, I should go north and go through the Baltic states and through Scandinavia. That'll be another video if uh, it turns out that people want to watch that. Otherwise, maybe it won't be another video because, frankly, editing eight hours of video is really hard and doing the voiceover and everything. But here is Istanbul, and actually very well represented. I mean, there's a few sites, lots of buildings you can see, lots of buildings, uh, different clusters of different districts. 
and uh, we will pass by a mall. So I'm just sort of looking around, trying not to weave too much. I don't have track IR. Uh, for the first time uh, in this game, I actually thought uh, realized that track IR might be a good thing. Normally, I only associate that with uh, flight sims. Here, the end of the toll road, and yet another scale. Now, Istanbul is a really big city, and we're not going to see all the sites. I don't even know if they have the Asian side or not, because there's your truck simulator. So, yeah. But they do have the airport. Well, uh, they have the Ataturk airport, which uh, from my Turkish viewer, uh, Berifel, I understand is going to be closed. And it's sort of like currently the domestic, the one that's closer into the city. And so um, they want to close it and go with a bigger one. You can see the Istanbul mall back there. That's nice. I think that's like the most like recognizable monument that I've seen so far. I had a joke about Bazaar, uh, but I won't say it. <laughs> anyway, here we are at the airport. And it's actually a pretty complicated airport. We have to do U-turn here. And then we have to loop around to the other side. I assume that in the midst of all this, there are lots of places for deliveries, but uh, or they just wanted me to see the whole thing. It's a nice sort of airport, very, all these little white fences, and I uh, break a part of it right there. <laughs> um, well, it's been eight hours of driving, actually nine hours because I had to get to Cardiff first. But uh, yeah, I guess I'm a le well, I wasn't really great at driving in the first place. But here we are approaching our final delivery point. And there we have it. Press enter. Should we park somewhere special? Well, that's okay. I just check where the difficult one is. Look at where the difficult one is. Now, I think there's a fence by the side of the road. I don't even know how to get to that slot if you can't, like, go forward onto the road and back up into it. That would be really hard. You can see me sort of pointing this out to the Twitch audience. Yeah, if there's a, if there's a fence there, that's a heck of a place to try and park. Most of those uh, difficult ones are really difficult, at least for me. I'm sure the Euro Truck Sim pros are really good at it, but I'll take the easy one. It gave me an excellent round out the whole trip. And yes, I completed the journey across Europe. Well, Cardiff to Istanbul anyway. There are other ways to cross Europe, obviously, but that particular trip managed to complete in the Twitch live stream. And there you have it. A grand adventure of exploration, visiting many cities I had not been to before in a truck. Uh, or in real life, obviously. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.